Welcome back. Let us resume our discussion on the uh, latch circuit that we are looking at, the transferable implementation of the latch and the flip flop. So, we started with the simplest latch circuit, which is just having a switch along with the capacitor, and this can fairly well act like a simple latch when the phi 1 is on uh, or the switch is on, the input level VDD or ground will be sampled onto the capacitor. So, this is a single latch which is level sensitive latch. Out of this, if we want to construct a flip flop, I can cascade two such latches. So, I can go ahead and put two such latches in series just like we did uh, for the block level implementation. So, I can put two transmission gates you can have as I said you may not even need a dedicated capacitance, this may be just a parasitic capacitance coming because of the MOSFETs and you can have another second latch which is driven by phi 2 and phi 1 and phi 2 can be just the opposite phases of the clock. So, if you want to have positive edge triggered flip flop, I can keep phi 2 as the positive pulse of the clock or the you know, level 1 of the clock. So, correspondingly I have the transistor level implementation sorry that is supposed to make the transistor level implementation. So, let me so this is a simplest possible implementation where you can just a minute let me. So, this is the simplest possible implementation that we can have you have the input clock sampling the data at C p. So, during the positive phase of the clock you can have the phi 1 over here phi 1 bar over here and then you have uh, phi 1 bar over here and phi 1 over here. So, you can have during the uh, input uh, during the high level of phi 1 you can have the T g 1 which is transparent and T g 2 which is off as a result the input data is sampled at the C p. Whereas, when the opposite phase is on that is the phi 1 is low and phi 1 bar is high this is going to be on and this gets off immediately as a result the data is going to be the same value that was stored at C p will be transferred to the voltage the uh, capacitor over here. So, this is this can be a possible simple implementation, but uh, what are the issues over here can, uh, can can this work reliably is there any issue that we see in terms of data transfer. So, from V in to the C p and then from the C p to the final capacitor over here which can also be C p this is just we are relying on the parasitic capacitances we are not putting any additional intentional capacitance, because in general you can have a large number of registers and flip flops in digital design and if you start putting capacitances for each of those it is going to take a huge amount of area. For analog blocks they are fewer in numbers in the front end, so you are needing few big capacitors to implement them that there was just few in count, whereas digital units can be large in number. So, you need a huge number of registers and flip flops and of course, we do not we cannot afford to put these CPs or additional dedicated capacitors, we can rely on the MOSFET capacitor. So, now what is the problem here if, if I uh, look at the overall operation uh, ideally if this voltage is in the first phase getting charged to V d d by the input and next I am putting this latch on what is the voltage do I expect here is it going to go to V d d. So, phi 1 phase I charge this to V d d and in the phi 2 phase this was disconnected and this was turned on and therefore, we expect certain voltage over here. What is that voltage? Is it V d d? V d d by 2 because the charge sharing will take place and uh, the total capacitance has been increased. So, whatever was the initial volt charge on the capacitor C p times you know V d d was the charge and once you disconnect this that charge is now preserved that is not having any path to go. As a result now uh, if this was initially discharged to 0 depending upon the voltage over here suppose this was 0 this will go all the way to uh, uh, the total charge being constant will be uh, 2 C p times V d d or 2 C p times V out and the result V out will be V d d by 2 
of course, you can have some different voltage stored. We can in the previous phase, you can end up having a different voltage. As a result, it will depend upon the previous voltage. So, this has to be in general equal to uh, C p times V d d plus uh, C p times V out and accordingly, I can find out what is the uh, V out level. So, definitely this is not going to solve the purpose, we are not going to get the same voltage level as we expect. So, in order to preserve that, what can be done, what can be added to this latch circuit, so that I can always ensure that if this level was sampled to be VDD, the final level over here is also coming as VDD or if this was sampled to be ground, the final level over here is also coming to be ground. So, in that case I have to decouple these two capacitors, I cannot directly couple the capacitor over here to the capacitor over here using this switch, I need to decouple that. One way to do that is to put an inverter over here. If I put an inverter, then I am able to comfortably decouple the latch. Likewise, the input of this uh, latch can be coming from some other latch or some other logic gate. There also, I would not like uh, charge sharing with the input device. So, once again, I would like to put an inverter over there. So, I can put one inverter here and I can put another inverter over here. So, that uh, the capacitances over here are not directly coupled to the capacitance on the other side. So, in order to arrive at the latch circuit, I can uh, put inverters after or before, suppose you are putting it uh, before the and so, if we uh, if we have to go for say uh, later we will see that putting the inverter after the switch can have some advantage, because there we can apply some feedback configuration. So, let us go for the switches and go for the inverter over here and another switch and another inverter over here. And then I have the uh, parasitic capacitance over here, which is given by the parasitic capacitance of the transistor at this point and likewise you have some parasitic capacitance over here C p C p. And these two switches are once again controlled by uh, phi 1 and phi 2, which is which can be just phi 1 bar. So, by phi 1 bar means if this is the clock phase, the high phase of the clock, phi 2 can be low phase of the clock that is it. And these are the parasitic capacitances constituted by this uh, MOSFET and the inverters and so on. So, now at least I have been able to decouple the two capacitances. If I am sampling V d d over here uh, and after the phi 1 has gone low, the V d d V d d voltage will be retained over here. Of course, there will be some leakage and some disturbance, but to large to a uh, significant extent the drop may not be very large and V d d will be retained and as a result the output will be driven to low, output of the first inverter will be driven to low. And therefore, when you close this switch that low level is uh, coming to the C p. Transistor level what is happening of course, we should have that picture in mind that what is happening at the circuit level and which transistor is getting on, what is the discharge path, what is the charge path and so on. this is the transistor level picture, you have the phi 1, um, phi 1 bar. So, phi 1 bar means just the opposite phase of the clock, this is uh, phi 1 bar and this is phi 1 and this is your d in and this is your q. So, of course, we have two inverters now in chain. Uh, so, the polarity of d in and q is going to be same, if the d in is 1, the q is also supposed to be 1. So, that behavior is of course, maintained and uh, when the phi 1 phase is on, this transmission gate gets on, I can call it T g 1, T g 1 gets on and uh, the d in is stored over here and during that phase, this is off, the T g 2 is off and uh, as a result, the output of this inverter will be d in bar. So, this will be d in bar. So, this d in bar is remaining transparent to d in during the phi 1 phase, if the d in is changing, the value over here will also be changing and in the phi 2 phase, this gets off as a result, the value of d in stored over here becomes clamped, because this after this getting off, whatever voltage was stored over here and this parasitic capacitance of this node will be remaining uh, uh, stationary 
and as a result this will be the sample dean value and hence this will be the sample dean bar value if this was vdd this will remain vdd and this will remain zero and the moment uh, if, if this remains vdd that means this mosfet will be on and it will be uh, always shorting this point to ground and the moment this latch goes on because this mosfet is on it will also discharge this node to ground as a result this will also bring the same value logic level zero over here and as a result the output will be going high so that is the overall operation phi 1 phase this node the parasitic capacitance at this node cp i can draw it upwards so this is the parasitic capacitance cp at this node so once the switch is getting off over here this cp is storing the charge vdd times cp if the input level was vdd and that is keeping this transistor uh, the nmos in on state and as a result this particular node is pulled down all the way to ground and likewise when the phi 1 phase is low or you can say the phi 1 bar is going high this switch gets disconnected and as a result whatever data was stored over here on the cp that is retained if this was 0 this is retained as 0. So, these are the two nodes or the parasitic capacitance and these two nodes are essentially uh, doing the role of storage they are basically storing the charge in this particular configuration of the latch this is clear now of course as we uh, saw that we are not going to afford we, are, we may not be able to afford dedicated capacitances over here and the leakage can become dominant um, we, it can end up uh, having a significant droop if you are uh, having a lower clock frequency in the system and you want to keep the data st stationary for a long duration it can be a problem if you are having a faster circuit or a faster logic uh, then this configuration can work and people do use this flip flop configuration wherever fast operation is required and you do not need to retain the data for a long duration. But in cases where the data has to be retained for long duration it can be a problem for example if you look at the counter that we are trying to build and the last logic level that you have uh, there you can see that the counter level or the output level is maintained for a long duration. So, the entire sampling duration we have uh, these T s the sampling pulses T s uh, or we can we can have called them phi 1 in our uh, case and then you have this uh, the clocks coming in between which is basically uh, let me distinguish this from the phi 1 here here I have used phi 1 just for the clock and here let me call this phi s for sampling phase and this is the uh, phi I can say phi conversion phase where the ramp is happening and you are converting the data. So, for this entire duration the uh, MSB of the counter it stays 1 for half the duration 1 0 for half the duration therefore, uh, the data is retained for a long duration for the MSB counter and likewise of course, in this particular example in general we are having lo lower clock frequency as a result uh, there is a uh, significant uh, deviation significant deviation in this voltage levels can be expected especially if you look at the last flip flop that is MSB flip flop of the counter definitely that is having the longest duration of the data retaining retention it is storing the data for almost half the duration of this entire phi c uh, and as a result uh, it can have maximum amount of deviation on the MSB level uh, that can end up discharging significantly for the same uh, dimensions of this parasitic capacitances. Therefore, especially in low frequency operations uh, we may not really rely on uh, this particular configuration of the flip flop uh, where we are using this parasitic capacitances to store the charge and retain the logic level rather uh, we would go for a system where we can have storage mechanism inbuilt and we can have uh, some mechanism through which we can ensure the retention of this logic state independent of this parasitic capacitance value and there we utilize the concept of positive feedback in this circuit. So, let us see what is the concept of positive feedback and how it can help us in implementing a stable storage element which is not only used in latches and flip flop, but it is also used in designing memories semiconductor memories which are basically SRAM integrated onto your chip. Any, any question before we proceed? So, uh, if we uh, consider this 
inverter as an amplifier we know that in the sorry this has to be ground. So, suppose uh, by some mechanism I am biasing this inverter in this mid region. So, that it is in high gain region right this is what we do while operating a common source amplifiers or uh, so there we ensure that the input is such input is biased such that uh, the uh, biasing point is in this high gain region. Suppose we do the same for this inverter because uh, because through some mechanism we are able to bias two inverters which are connected back to back output of the second inverter is connected to the input of the first one and the output of the first one connected to the input of the first one. Suppose, we are able to bias both of these inverters in this high gain region and then uh, we have we apply some sinusoid signal at uh, we suppose break this loop and apply some sinusoid signal at this point. What is the gain of the circuit? If we look at the overall behavior, we can just take superposition, you have the same signal being applied to the NMOS and PMOS for the first device as well as the second device also having same signal. So, it is nothing else, but a PMOS and an NMOS uh, common source amplifier tied together. I can take superposition and find out the V out as uh, minus g m n times um, the R o over here, which is R o p parallel R o n of the output times V in. Likewise, you have the g m p minus g m p times um, R o n parallel R o p times V in. I can just take superposition. So, you have because of the first signal over here, I can assume that this is AC ground and then find out the expression for the output voltage. So, if I assume the signal is over here and put this to AC ground and I have minus g m p times R o n parallel R o p times V in signal coming over here. Likewise, second if I assume that the signal is um, at the gate of the N MOS and this is AC ground, then g m n times R o n parallel R o p is the signal over here and I just add it together and for both of them of course, we are getting inversion. So, both of them have same effect of on the output for a given input and therefore, this is the small signal expression that I get. So, I can see this as an amplifier provided these transistors are biased in this region. I am not saying how they are biased, suppose imagine you have some mechanism through which you have biased and then I can ask the question that if you uh, if you have this connection, uh, can we see a uh, positive feedback coming in that means, if you because of uh, some reason suppose this node voltage is going up. If this voltage finally, also goes up tends to go up further that means, it is going to support this transition from the initial point suppose the initial point was V d d by 2 it was the high gain region for both of the transistors suppose you initialize uh, all these uh, both these nodes of V d d by 2. And after that because of some reason because of some noise this node voltage went up little bit by delta. So, what is the effect on the final node is it supporting the same direction of change or is it suppressing that. So, here if you see if this goes little bit higher than V d d by 2 this is going to go down by a larger amount because we are in the high gain region and as a result this is going to go up by a further larger amount therefore, supporting the same change. Therefore, we have a uh, positive feedback established. Likewise, if it is going down it will be going up and it will be going down even strongly therefore, it will be supporting the same change or the same direction of change. Therefore, if you uh, initialize this loop in the simulation suppose you initialize this loop to V d d by 2 here and V d d by 2 here uh, by some appropriate setting you have some noise injected at some point depending upon the initial condition of the noise or uh, the noise level here uh, positive or negative the inverter can end up latching in one of the two levels high or low because of this positive feedback action. And once that is established the levels over here are stored indefinitely. From the point of view of feedback if I say uh, if I am looking at the common source operation from here to here you have 180 degree phase shift from here to here you have another 180 degree phase shift because of the inversion. Therefore, from this point to this point of course, we have 360 degree phase shift and we know we have considered we have discussed the stability criteria and in the amplifiers we always try to avoid this condition you know 360 degree phase shift and high gain and uh, therefore, we know that in this condition for the omega or the frequency at which this 360 degree phase shift occurs the circuit will oscillate. So, that is the omega oscillation of the oscillator 
the frequency at which overall 360 degree phase shift across the loop is obtained and if at that frequency gain is higher than 1, the circuit will oscillate. Here we have two stages, we are in high gain region both of them, therefore the overall gain across the loop is definitely higher than 1. But what is the frequency at which omega 360 degree is being reached? That is omega equal to 0, because we know that you have the parasitic capacitances of this MOSFET which are going to uh, further degrade the phase at higher frequency. So, omega equal to 0 we have exactly 180 degree phase shift across this one and uh, exactly 180 degree phase shift across this one, but as we go towards higher frequency we know that the first pole we have another 90 degree phase shift, second pole we have another 90 degree phase shift for both these inverters. Therefore, exactly uh, 360 degree phase shift is uh, achieved at omega equal to 0. As a result, what we are seeing is that the inverter is latching up to 1 or 0 or 0 or 1 at omega equal to 0, that means DC it is not changing. So, that is consistent with our uh, discussion on oscillation and stability, 360 degree phase shift being reached at omega equal to 0 and the inverter latching up at DC, one of them getting stuck to 0, another one getting stuck to 1 and therefore, storing this data indefinitely. So, this is the basic mechanism which is allowing us to store the data or save the data at these two nodes to either low or high or high or low indefinitely as long as the power supply is given to this inverters. This is clear the basic storage mechanism in the latch. In order to construct the flip flop out of this latch, however, we need to write into it, we need to deterministically write into the logic levels here and here. For that we need to access these nodes and intentionally write logic high or logic low into them. For that I can uh, I can go back to my latch circuitry that I built which was not having any feedback and try to modify it, try to insert a feedback over here. Here we already have a driving mechanism, here if I insert a feedback for both these inverters and try to make sure that these are going to store the data, they are the data storage is not dependent upon this parasitic capacitances, we can make sure that the uh, overall uh, circuit operation is stable, I mean, the values are going to be latched and stored for a sufficiently long time. So, one way of uh, doing that while ensuring the writability is to insert a inverter in feedback path over here and keep the feedback path off when the writing is going on at this node, when do we need the feedback, when do we need the feedback only when this is disconnected. So, that this stored data over here is retained for long duration. So, when it is getting written or when this latch is on we do not need feedback, because at that point I need this node value to be determined by the input value, but when this is getting off then I need the feedback to retain this data. I need the feedback to be woken up and retain this data. So, a logical uh, conclusion would be to add an inverter over here, add an inverter over here and then put another switch and connect it over here, this switch should be driven by phi 1 bar. So, that when phi 1 is on this latch, this gate is transparent, transmission gate is transparent, this node is connected to D in, the value over here is dictated by D in this is not playing any role in determining the data over here. However, as soon as this goes off I want to retain this data, I do not want this to be leaked because of uh, the different leakage paths that we have in the MOSFET. As a result I am turning on this feedback path, so that you are having a positive feedback in this loop and you are ensuring that this node voltage and this node voltage is fixed or clamped to the value to which it was written. If I, if I do not do this, if I do not have this switch, if I just have this inverter, if I do not have this additional switch, then you cannot determine that when this uh, node is, when this switch is getting on, this node can be driven by this inverter as well as the previous stage. So, I cannot determine with the, what is the logic state of this node, it can be uh, the previous stage you have an inverter which is trying to drive this node to VDD and at the same time you can have uh, some other intermediate logic state which is you know being driven by this particular inverter. More severe condition occurs when you have the 
clock overlap and uh, you can have the logic stored over here trying to propagate through this inverter into this particular node. So, I would like this node to be dictated by the d in when the phi 1 phase is on and not by this path. This is activated only when required when this data stored over here is supposed to be retained. So, uh, my final uh, implementation of the flip flop considering this topology would be including just another inverter over here along with the switch and hence creating two latches which are uh, uh, having the positive feedback path activated at the complementary phase of the uh, clock. So, I can complete the overall latch the flip flop circuitry. Let me uh, not draw the input state. I have the needs. Sorry, uh, I have to uh, let me redraw this, melt it up. So, you have the this is our uh, overall implementation, where the data can be retained for a uh, long duration. So, here I can start if I if it is a positive H triggered flip flop then I know that this second level is supposed to be triggered by the clock. So, I can say clock and clock bar and then you have clock clock bar sorry uh, clock bar and clock likewise you have the clock bar over here the opposite phase and clock here and you have the clock and clock bar here. So, this is uh, overall circuitry for the uh, flip flop that we can have which is robust enough and it is able to retain the data for long time and is not we are not depending upon the uh, parasitic capacitance for sampling the data. So, we can call this as uh, d and this can be q and also we can see that the q bar is also automatically available. So, I can also uh, use the q bar over here. So, this inverter is also giving us q bar. We will see that it may not be a very good option to use this as q bar rather than I can uh, use another inverter to use q bar we will see that why. Um, so, this is the overall edge triggered positive edge triggered D flip flop that we are having D q q bar and you have the clock edge and this is positive edge triggers. So, I do not put a bubble over here and you have the input and output terminal. So, this is the basic building block of our uh, uh, of our flip flop uh, of our counter. Any question before we go further and try to characterize some of the delays and uh, uh, transition uh, uh, delays and related definitions for this fifth flop, which can be useful for the design. Remember, uh, while designing the counter, we discussed the clock to q delay, which is going to uh, determine how much is the ripple duration from the input to the output. So, we need to see what is that ripple duration, and likewise, we also need to see two other very important definitions the setup time and the hold time, which also plays very important role in. 
uh, operation of the flip flop. So, we are going to look into three important definitions setup time, hold time and clock to queue delay. Before we go there any question regarding the basic operation and how we finally, arrived at this flip flop circuitry starting from the very basic definitions and assumptions. Of course, as, as compared to the dynamic, uh, as compared to the flip flops uh, where we did not have this feedback as compared to the simpler flip flop where we did not have this flip feedback, we are having two additional inverters and also we are having two inverter, uh, two additional transmission gates. So, from the point of view of clock of course, it is having uh, twice the uh, capacitor. So, suppose there is a uh, clock signal coming in, ultimately clock signal is also driven by some inverter or some you know uh, uh, buffers. So, ultimately a clock is a digital signal going 0 and 1, it will be driven by some inverters and the clock over here will be going to all the um, uh, different uh, NMOS and PMOS. Likewise, you will have the clock bar. So, if this is clock, I can have the uh, clock and clock bar being generated and being fed to all the different modules. Uh, in general, we would like the clock and clock bar to be exactly phase opposite, right. So, we would like them to be exactly um, 1 degree out of phase, but uh, in general they have finite rise and fall time. So, the clock and clock bar, if I look at the actual picture, they will have finite rise and fall time. So, If this is clock, you can have clock bar over here. And in general, for logic operation, the delay is defined with respect to the midpoint of the transition. So, for example, if I want to see the delay of the inverter I, and I draw the two waveforms input and output, that is defined with respect to the midpoint. And uh, so, if I want to characterize the inverter output, suppose this is the input waveform to the inverter having some finite rise time and fall time. So, the inverter will have some finite delay because as we know uh, when the input over here goes up, it will take some finite time for the NMOS to discharge it. So, it will be discharged completely after some finite duration. So, approximately once again it will be leading to a uh, down going voltage over here gradually only it will be discharged. So, it will have a slope and with respect to the uh, midpoint of transition of the input, it will have some additional delay. So, the input transition point, the midpoint of the out in output transition can be slightly away. So, this is the input of the inverter, this is the output of the inverter. Of course, it is 1 degree out of phase is inverted, but because of the finite delay of the inverter, you can have some propagation delay of the inverter. I can call it T delay of the inverter. So, generally we characterize the delays of the logic gates in terms of the distance between the midpoint transition. If this is the input rising edge of the uh, or rising edge of the input of the inverter, it will the output will definitely will fall as the input is going up, but it will take some finite delay because of the uh, discharge path provided by the NMOS, you have a RC time constraint and the last signal operation, you are having ultimately this voltage getting discharged through this inverter uh, through this NMOS, which is having some on resistance and therefore, it is going to take some time to discharge it and therefore, there is going to be some delay and in order to characterize the delay, we have to look the look at the difference between the midpoint and that is the way we define the delay of that inverter. So, uh, in general when we are uh, looking at the characterization of these flip flops, there also likewise we have to look at the uh, transition points and the midpoints of these transition zones to characterize the delay. So, uh, before we go further, let us take a, a short 2 minutes break and then resume our discussion. So, before I go further and deal with the delays of these uh, logic gates and finally, characterize the flip flop in terms of these definitions, the set of time, hold time and the C2Q delay. Let us uh, take a 2 minutes break and, and then resume our discussion on the characterization of the flip flops.